In this video, we want to take a look at named values, which are a huge part of the power and convenience of value and action resolvers. The system is all new with Odin 3.0, and if you missed our last two videos on value and action resolvers, you may want to watch those before diving into named values, as we'll be making use of some of the same concepts covered in those videos. Named values are contextual values that can be accessed by the string that is being resolved. For example, the property named value is an example of a built-in named value. The title attribute can make use of property.path to show the full path of a property that the title attribute is attached to. Notice the use of the dollar sign in front of property that allows access to the named value. The second use of the title attribute is functionally identical to the previous. Here we have a second use of the title attribute. The string is resolved to a method, then the named values are passed to the method as parameters. In this case, the property named value. It's worth mentioning that named values are matched to method parameters first by name and then by type. And if the method has any parameters that cannot be assigned from named values, then that's considered an error. While there are built-in named values, we can also create our own custom named values to use with custom attributes. A built-in example of custom named values is the validate input attribute. This attribute has two custom named values. One's message, and another one is message type. You can see more information about this particular attribute on the Odin Inspector website, and we'll link that below. For this video, we're going to create a simple example of an attribute that will display formatted current time in hours, minutes, and seconds, and display that information as a label in the inspector. To do that, we first need to create the attribute, and the attribute will need just one string field to hold the formatted date. And the value of that string will be set by the constructor, like so. Then we can create the attribute drawer. The drawer will need a value resolver with a string generic argument. In the initialize function, we can create an instance of the value resolver by calling value resolver.get for string. This function will then take in the property from the attribute as well as the string for the date. Next, overriding the draw property layout function, we can check for errors with the value this.formatted date resolver dot has error. If an error does exist, we can call draw error on the value resolver. If there's no error, then we can draw a label with a value from the value resolver. Now this is somewhat different from how we've handled errors in the last couple of videos, but this ensures that if there is an error, we won't draw an invalid label. The last step before adding the custom named values is to call this.nextDrawer to ensure that the value is drawn as it otherwise would be. With the basics now in place, we can start to define the named values, which we do when we create an instance of the value resolver. This is done with an array of the type named value, and each named value has a name and a type. We'll create an hour, minute, and second named values, all of the type integer. Then to ensure that the values are updated when the property is drawn, we need to add a few more lines. First, we'll cache the current time. Then we'll set the value of each named value by calling this.formateddataResolver.context.namedValue.set for each named value. This function then takes in the name and the value of the named value. And that's it for the attribute, drawer, and named values. We can now implement this attribute and make use of our newly created named values. In our attribute, we'll start our expression with the at symbol, and then we can reference each of our named values by prepending the name with a dollar sign. Note that we've added backslashes to our expression to allow the colon substrings that separate the time values in the label. A quick test in Unity, and we can see our attribute is working as expected. Our name values will also work as input parameters for a method. For example, we can create a new function that returns a string and takes in three values that correspond to the names of our newly created named values. This function will return a string that is formatted in the same way as the earlier expression in the attribute. We can then add a second use of our attribute that resolves to a method instead. Another quick test in Unity, and we can see that both uses of the attribute are functionally identical with our newly created named values working as expected. In our examples, we used all of the named values, but it's worth mentioning that this is not required. We could just as well create a get formatted time function that only takes in the hour and minute named values, like so. Also of note is that the property named value always exists, and the value named value exists whenever a property has a value. These named values do not need to be created and will exist automatically with no additional work from you. So we hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game design.